great. This one is for uh, Tony. Um, I was wondering, what was the process going from the original uh, Bioman dub Saban had done to what was the far more Saved by the Bell inspired Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? At what point was the decision made to take the show in a radically American direction? And then, you know, did it have any other forms between Bioman and Adaptive Jew Rangers and NPR? I can read it. Well, that's a good question. That's a good question. Just, and nobody ever asked that. Thank you. Um, the, um, the the decision to go with, uh, away from that, that decision was made before I got involved. In, in, in that the, the what I did what I did with the show is I took the original Bioman uh, pilot that I, you're aware of, obviously, that was done many years before, and I took the character relationships out of that specifically, and that was it. Um, we were looking for a way to, to group them together in a way that worked, and that they should get come up with a really good a good character relationship, character scheme. So we took that and plugged it in. The decision to go completely American was from day one. Uh, we never considered beyond uh, a brief conversation just dubbing the show. Um, we did do, however, about a year and a half before we started our Power Rangers, we took footage from a show called Metalder, which eventually became VR Troopers, um, and made a, uh, a What's Up Tiger Lily kind of show called Metal Man, Metalhead, no Metal Man, Metal Man. <laughs> and uh, tried to sell it to MTV. And it was totally dug and total camp. Um, uh, they bought um, uh, Eon Flux instead. <laughs> and, uh, and we got to have Power Rangers. So, uh, yeah. so, but you. it was from day one. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, I was wondering, is there a reason why in some series that you have like standard uh, colors, red, blue, yellow, and pink? Is there a reason why some of like, the green was replaced with black and the same with the yellow and the color and the pink girl? It's all, that decision is made by a uh, Japanese studio toy because uh, we don't have control of their, how they want to establish the car. Because uh, we do whatever you know, they did in the previous season, we take the idea and concept and you know, custom design. Uh, so I guess that, you know, because, uh, you know, to make a difference of each season, I guess that's why they change the color every time. And sometimes that, you know, like Ninja Strong, you know, the Navy or the Crimson, which usually we don't have. Uh, you know, I know they did something different for Geki Ranger, uh, which is coming up soon in Japan. Uh, yeah, for Fifth Ranger is quite a different color. Uh, so I guess that, you know, once in a while they just, you know, change the color here and a little bit just to keep you guys fresh and stuff. So that we just follow whatever they establish. Sometimes we make that uh, male character in Japan become a female character because uh, we want to put, uh, you know, in Japan we usually have one female back then, so now we want to put two female characters. So like uh, Mighty Morphin, we made a yellow to the girl and also Time Force, yellow to the girl. And we made those, you know, sex operations, but... <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, it's funny watching the male stunt man put the ball on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they come to the set in the morning, Morning, open the door, just like putting a brown. Can you hook me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, um, you, you all seem to have sort of come from different paths, like writer, designer, action choreographer. How, how did you start off and how did you get to where you are now as, as producers? Like, kind of, I'm going to guess a long answer. <laughs> I just have to go be some people up in behind. <laughs> uh, well, I, I think as I stated before, I started off as a writer's assistant, and I was given the opportunity to write a spec script for the story editor at the time, Doug Sloan, and he liked the spec script, and, and shortly after that, I got moved up to a writer, and I've been writing ever since then, and, and I worked my way up to co-producer at this point. Uh, my case, that you know, first thing I did for Mighty Morphin was uh, coming to help leading the cable for uh, the episode and Tommy become white engine. So that when Tommy's coming down, you know, Tommy's going up, and I came in, you know, did some wire gags. And after that, you know, next job I have for Saban was that I shot a battle grid sequence for VR Troopers because the uh, VR Trooper wanted to have more uh, footage of fight scene, but they didn't have, you know, they had to have separate unit to shoot that. So that uh, I was brought in, I shot that battle group sequence. And the uh, producer in Power Ranger, Jonathan Zakor, he liked what I did with VR Troopers. So he asked me to join MMPR, and I decided to shoot in MMPR for him. 
then uh, uh, while we're working together uh, for many different seasons, uh, he started liking what I do. So he asked me, you know, why don't you, you know, give more idea for storylines? So that's how he brought me up to, you know, a story discussion during course of turbo. Then uh, he brought me in officially from main space. Then after that, you know, my contribution was you know, getting more and more. So he just gave me a, why don't you become part of the producing team? Then I become producer, co-producer on North Galaxy. After that, kept my position of co-producer working with Jonathan. When Disney took over the show, they need to have somebody that who you know how to produce the show. So they, you know, they just have to have someone from uh, you know, Savant side come work with Disney. So they just asked me if I can carry on the show and keep producing the show in New Zealand. Then I become, you know, as it's a producer after that. Okay. Uh, well, my background is in special effects and design, but um, you know, I came to Hollywood uh, as a kid to write and direct, and of course they were like, you know, back the line, everybody wants to write and direct, and so I, I kind of built up my resume doing special effects um, to make connections, and, but always writing, always putting stuff out there. I'd actually um, gotten a couple things uh, into Disney, and um, uh, they were talking about making some movies of the week and stuff like that. At the same time, I had met uh, Bruce Kalish, and um, I had a comic book called Blue, and he was interested in turning that into a TV show. So we started working on that, and we were together working on it one day, and he got a phone call for Power Rangers. And he said, hey, I'm sitting here with Craig Arano. It's in, uh, you know, it would be great if we did this together. And they were like, oh, we know Craig, so bring him down. And um, you know, of course, uh, I went in and interviewed, and I think I called the Zords uh, Zoids. <laughs> and then I was like, ooh, I think I just got fired and I haven't even been hired. Yet. And, uh, Did you do the movie costumes, though? Yeah, I had done some stuff for the movie. I worked for a, a studio called Criswell Effects. Uh, not the Ranger costumes, but some of the bad uh, guy costumes that were in it. Um, but it's, I still wasn't like directly involved like heavily with, with the show. So. And I knew it. It was just like one of those things that you know, um, you just made a, made a mistake at a really bad, bad time. <laughs> um, but what they really wanted to do with SPD was, uh, you know, with a big corporation uh, like Disney, they're constantly progressing, they're trying to change it, trying to find a new audience, trying to get you know different levels and different ratings, and so um, they just wanted to kind of shake it up. You know, which Quichu was like, oh, you shook me up. <laughs> But they were like, hey, you know, you're you know, ambitious and crazy and, uh, you know, try try and do some new stuff. So that's that's how I ended up. It was the best. It was the greatest. Sorry, that was like nine calls from my wife. So. <laughs> <laughs> she just arrived. So she was wondering where I was. Um, uh, my story is I started as a voice actor um, uh, doing anime primarily with a show called Robotown. Woo! And that led me into uh, into writing, strangely enough. Um, and I know that's a weird jump, but you know you have to make a living when you're raising kids. <laughs> so, so um, um, thanks to my wife, actually, um, I, uh, I got into writing and started writing anime, and that led me to Savant Entertainment because they were just getting into it. But I'd also spent some time working in local television and radio, uh, so I learned how to write, uh, writing ad copy for TV and radio commercials and that sort of thing. Um, I was a story editor for several years and was part of the creative development team at Savannah whenever a new show would come up. And um, like I said before, I, I don't know if it was because I was specifically asked for or because it was my turn. But uh, when I went upstairs, when I called, called upstairs to Himes and, and he said that I wanted to do this show and then he showed us the footage and we thought he was nuts and, <laughs> and we went ahead and did it anyway and, um, and out of that, um, I had already been doing some producing for Savon, but kind of as a reward for coming up with the methodology of how to make the show, which is pretty much what my claim to fame is. Um, uh, they made me a, a producer, a full-on producer, and, and I haven't looked back 